What is up, MPX addicts? This is Jay Williams, your hashtag certified mark, and you're watching MPX Mainline. I am here, as always, with my co-host, the voice of the MPX addicts, Kyle Smith. I'm back. Yes. I'm back. We are, we're both back. We're back, and, and honestly, we're back on YouTube, finally. Oh, we're not live anymore? No. So I can cuss and you'll edit it. Yeah, I'll try. Son of a bitch. Oh, God damn it. <laughs> But either way, tonight was MPX's Parabellum. We are gearing up for war, much like the name it says, and everything is what? Parabellum means something else. Yeah. I mean, I know it's the title of John Wick 3, but... It, it right. means preparing for war. Says who? Says Latin. That's a damn language. No one listens to that. Uh, either way, tonight was an intense night with a whole bunch of just dark and uh, intense matches the Very whole night through. Very ominous tones. Uh, you know, we had both champs here. Oh yeah, you yeah. Know. And uh, we had half of the tag champs because again, the techs, they don't—they're never together. They shouldn't be tag champions. They're never together. Well, their challengers weren't here at all, so they're on special assignment. I have good authority. So, yeah, yeah. well, either way, it was a great night. And you know what? Let's uh, let's go ahead and get to it. Fall. Oh, it's Saturday night. A break for the wicked of the weekend. Mama, get it. For the first match tonight, we got to see, like you said, one half of the MPX Tag Team Champions, the Party Viking himself, Tyler Jett, lost taking his theme on... Song. Eh, no, yeah, lost his theme song. It's I, all you know, fight I have bears now. That whenever Dimitri's in a tag team, it always goes with his tag team music. Yeah, that's or true. his music. Dimitri's a music hog. Eh, well, yeah, I mean, it fits. I mean, they are the Berserkers, so, you know, the fight bears theme. He has nothing against bears. But Tyler way, Viking is just a Party Viking. Tyler Jett. Yeah, Tyler took Viking, on... same person. <laughs> really? <sighs> Tyler Jett took on a returning brawler Morrison, who, well, I finally caught his last name. Well, yeah, we've seen him twice, and I... can we not see him again? I, you know, know, honestly, I guess that's your opinion. I think he actually did a really, really good job tonight. Taking I will be honest. Tyler Jett he to task. caught Tyler with a great right hand. Almost knocked oh, him geez. out. Oh, jeez. That was, right was hand, beautiful. That diving, you know, it's like that diving kick mm -hmm. that he did. Oh, jeez. I mean, for someone who has no teeth like Brawler, he's obviously going to know how to knock someone out because he's mm -hmm. obviously had his knocked out before. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, you think he would actually had a pinpointed it but i mean it got good it was two and three quarters it was close well, true true but unfortunately he wasn't able to put him down and the the party viking was able to pick up the win yeah i mean you know tyler jet doing that beautiful running knee and it's just oh. one two three and again though that was that was a giant bear that was more for dimitri where you know i don't know i don't know where dimitri i mean is. i'm telling you teams they need to travel together that's not yeah. a tag team in all we trust always tells it jamie Aller says that is not a true tag but team they're a team that trusts each other to be able to compete on their own yeah i just you know they don't need to you know cheat to win. Who cheats to win besides Eddie Guerrero? And then after that, we got to see Emo versus Action as James Johnson of the Emo Kids took on Magnum RL of Team Action, and what a match this was. It was, and it was also one of those where it's like, uh, the, I don't think the fans knew what to do like you know it was it was really tough i mean i mean first off we got to see you know it was like i guess a uh sigh off between yeah, the two versus those finger guns yeah uh, true so as honestly i think, Mexican stand I think that if uh, magnum had just kept doing that you know james johnson would have passed out from hyperventilation and that's what i magnum said one that's exactly what i said but they had a they did have an incredible match between the two of them. I mean, it's like when when Johnson pulled Magnum into that spine buster, mm -hmm. that was just, oh, wow. Yeah, it's that like. That was very good. And then, you know, Magnum. Magnum's no slides on himself. Mm hmm. A lot of people are like, oh, he's just attacking him for blah, blah, blah. Eh, there's a lot more than that. It's honestly, it's like you, if you look at James Johnson's past, you know, monikers, he has been the angel of misery. He's yeah. the king of Texas cruiserweights. He's yep. was the gigolo. He's never Ugh. lost any of those titles, really. I, mean, uh, I guess you could say that, but from you could definitely authority. see shades of the angel of misery in this match. Yeah, you could. I mean, and from authority, late at night, the gigolo comes out, you know. Oh. So, he's got to be on the streets of Bedford around. Yeah, and um, I, you just got to wonder, it's like, with, with as hard as James Johnson was fighting in this, do you think there's still some, like, like lingering resentment for Team Action letting Tatum Manning go? 
I mean, you know, that could have been part of it. You know, he's got a little ordeal with the cops, but we saw, hey, cover, perfect. Mm -hmm. Not on the stream, not across the street. Oh, yeah. Magnum, Magnum got sent to the hospital. Yeah. Oof. yeah get better soon. Okay, oh, yeah, that's good. And then we got to see what can only be said as a, a, a classic style match as Joey Corman took on Ricky Jackson, the, the time bomb. Uh, the ticking time bomb. Yeah, true, true. You heard it before it came out. It was... And then I was waiting for the I'm yeah. coming. But it's... Uh, yeah, no, unfortunately not. But uh, it's just like the, it was a classic match. I mean, these two old school guys basically just, you know, put on a clinic of a classic style of match. Yeah, it was an old school match, and you know we've seen Ricky Jackson before. He came in, he mm -hmm. fought Richter, and you know, it was one of the greatest matches that we'd saw seen then. Okay, you could say that, I guess. You know, maybe maybe you could say that. Uh, you know, Jackson right. versus Richter, well, that was a great match. No, Ricky's all right. You know, it's, it's Richter. Uh, but you know, oof. <laughs> why? Why? Why are you so mean? He's, he's our favorite. He's our favorite wrestler. Is he? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay, fine. We say so. Well, just because you say something doesn't mean it's true. Hey, I'm a millionaire. Is it true? I don't know. You maybe you should start. No, see? Just because okay. you say you something doesn't mean it's you true. Gotta, you made your point. You made your point. But either way. Unless yes. I say it, then it is true. So, yes, I am a millionaire. <laughs> yeah. But it was honestly, it was a great match. In my yeah. Opinion. It was a very good old school match. It was something that old school fans were like, you know, very technical. Mm -hmm. we, I mean, we saw a head, scissors, take over. How long have we seen that for? I know, right? Yeah. It was incredible. Uh, uh, unfortunately, Corman's uh, dive to the outside didn't work out for him. Yeah, I, I doubt we'll see him again. He's out. He's out. But yeah. now Rick Jackson on the other hand, he can come back anytime. Yeah, well, you, know, you know, just maybe leave the straight jacket on him. Yeah, that would be interesting. Yeah, true. Earlier on in the night, Wesley Crane and Frankie Fisher finally made their match at the Texas Rumble official. In two weeks, we will see the two of them go toe to toe for the MPX Championship. Yes, and Frankie, he's bringing back a great ref, a ref that was always there for Frankie Fisher. Oh, she's not, no, this is the second time he's been a ref. Yeah, but when he was there, Frankie, it's the only ref Frankie can trust because but either way, have a vendetta against Fisher. Uh, yeah. It's no, true. Well, so he goes and gets the one that shares his last name. That has nothing to do with it. Uh -huh. you know how many Smiths are out here? Didn't, are we all related to you, huh? You are? I hate you. But either way, it's racist. Wesley Crane was ready for a fight tonight, and obviously Frankie Fisher wasn't, you know, being driven to the back. Well, but somebody else was definitely itching for a fight himself. See, and as Tatum Manning laid out a challenge to the MPX champion. Well, because Tatum's the one true reigning champion here. I, well, um, I mean, let's put it this way. First of all, because you're going to try to gloss over, Frankie is smart. Frankie's got a title match on 50. Why does he have to fight now? He doesn't need to fight now. He doesn't need to fight next week on the 8th. He's got to wait till the 15th because he wants that title because he wants to prove that the god of mpx is going to reign over the devil uh, of mpx honestly i think the dark savior of mpx is going to you know come out of this one on top because just it's it's been a while we need we need we need goodness we need holiness we need to all be cleansed and frankie fisher is going to be our savior Ugh. And we once again got to see our dark savior here at MP. No, 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 wrong one, wrong one, wrong one. No, yes, yes, that one. The evil Dave savior, Sagan forever. Dave Sagan, hail Sagan forever, taking on the returning unholy Isaiah James. Yes, and Isaiah, James. Isaiah was looking to just spark something in Dave, well, and he is, did. This is the house that unholy built. You didn't know that? He's got I, houses all over Texas. I think, one of them. I think a certain asshole is going to take exception to that. Or the Texas psycho, the American psycho. Uh, yeah. Seven foot one. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. But either way, this match was like, it started out pretty, you know, it was like the same way it always does. Just Dave not giving a damn. Just, and, well, Isaiah took it into his own hands to, to spark something in Dave, and he Isaiah, really did. Isaiah's pointed out what I've said forever. Dave is showing emotion. He's supposed to be emotionless. No, no. He's showing emotion. Oh, those he's emotions. Again. And again, it might give a romance back. Why do they got to be sad? Yeah. Yeah, it's true. But either way, I, I, as soon as he touched Lizzie, Dave was on fire. Yeah, but 
Isaiah kicked Lizzie in the back and well, put that, her head No, that was her. because Isaiah threw her in front of him. But Isaiah she, had nothing to do with that. Oh, no, no. she had, Isaiah he, was way far from her and didn't yeah, kick her anyway. Yeah, because he threw anyway. her over there no, and she knew. not she what knew happened, She knew and she took exception. She took exception in getting her revenge. The poor unholy balls. I mean, Jeez. it's, you know, I was just, it's thud. I don't know, but either way, you know, her her um, <clears throat> handiwork basically allowed Dave to pick up the win, and, you know, you can only and imagine that it's going to upset not just the unholy, but also, you know, the insidious And let's be well. honest, MPX, yes, the insidious one should be very upset with unholy, should be, you know, because, you know, he should protect it better, but that's not what we need to talk about. MPX management needs to look at the referee, Brandon King, at this. He had a hand on both, th- both you know... Yeah, hey, you can't know. That was bad. Yeah, well, either way, Dave Sagan picking up the win in a match that a lot of people thought that he wouldn't be able to win. And, well, we'll see what happens next. Balls! And then we got to see, honestly, one of my favorite wrestlers coming to MPX one last time before oh, we lose him Silencio. for a few months. Yeah. No, no. What? No, you no. told me more Chris- Silencio was awesome. Did he... You okay. He was one of your favorites. No, no. Yeah, I no, heard that. No, no. Yeah. Definitely it's, it's not. True. I, I mean, it's very true. <laughs> but we got to see Chris Cruz and his brother Adrian one last time before Chris goes off to New Zealand for three months. And why? For training. Who wants to go to New Zealand? Uh, people who want to get better at what they do. Who? And who? Chris Name one good person from New Zealand. <laughs> That's what I thought. Either way, they took on the Lost. Well, at least two members of the Lost, because Muerte Silencio and Sky De Lacrimosa took them on with Jason on the outside. And, well, uh, the Lost don't seem to be gelling quite as well, well as Isaac and okay. Isaac wasn't here. Daddy wasn't here to maintain the children. Mm-hmm. I just, you know, and I mean, let's let's be honest. We're, we're going qu- to I'm, I'm going to question Isaac here. Sky is the leader when Isaac's not here. I... Wow. What? Uh, you know you're you're going to let the, the master- crazy one? He, he is the mastermind, so yeah. I'm pretty sure there is a method to this madness. Nah. Uh, but I've got to say, uh, Muerto Silencio, like, you didn't get to see him last time, but you saw him now. Is he not an absolute beast in the ring? Oh, he was good, but I mean, you know, it's one of those things where he just... Him and Silver are rubbing each other. Yeah, they just do not seem to get along at all. I what mean... Oil and vinegar? Oil and water? What is it? The oil and water, yeah. Oil yeah. And water. So, yeah. yeah, no, oil and vinegar is actually good. It goes great on pizza. Oh. And just ask Luigi. Oh, okay. Yeah, but either way, is unfortunately, that, that um, lack of cohesion between Jason Silver and Marte Silencio so did not well, do them any favors as, I mean, you know, it distracted Sky while the two of them argued physically. Well, I mean, let's put it this way. It's because Silver, as Sky pointed out, it's not being a team player. Silver was not, you know, he wasn't. First of all, he didn't want a new partner. If you remember the video, yeah, he's true. A new partner. Yeah, he's, he's, no, 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 no. Yeah. We're mainline. But, but I'm just repeating what Silver said. Yeah, no, no, let's not. Let's not. I mean, but either way, unfortunately, you know, for Sky anyway, uh, he took a rather big hit from the Los Diablos and, you know, well, can't beat, got the pin. Can't beat brothers. I mean, that's kind of proven, right? Yeah, well, I mean, the the lost are supposed to be brothers, but you know, yeah, lost boys, Silver and Sky are brothers. True. Well, I, I can't help but think that him. perhaps if it was Jason Silver in the ring instead, it might have been a different outcome. Mafia, I don't know. Yeah, Mexican Italian. It works. Yeah, and you can't be brothers. Dudleys will never beat. They're undefeated. And since his debut, actually, I guess you could say before his real debut, Ian Rain has been on Stephen Kirby's target list because, well, he cost him the title and then cost him revenge. Tatum won that title fair and square again. I don't know what you're talking about. No, he won the title fair and square. It was the rematch that basically he interfered in. He didn't interfere in that either. Yeah, he did. Not, what are you talking about? It was during the lumberjack yeah, match. You were there. There was no way Ian could have got there. He got in from the other. Just didn't happen. God, this is you don't pay attention to the attention. important things. I was just, either I was way. Stopping Larry and CJ. I was doing my job as a Mr. Mayhem was finally to able to get his revenge at basically just rocking Ian Rain's world from the bell. 
Yeah, I mean, you know, first of all, how old is Ian? Because you know that Kirby put it alcohol on him. He did it to Tatum too. That's illegal. I think that so. is. I'm pretty sure he's old enough. Ian's old. Sure okay. Yes. I mean, but where's team action? They should have got Kirby for when he did it to Tatum. That's illegal. Tatum's not 21 yet. Uh, Kirby needs to go to jail for giving that. underage alcohol. But either way, Tatum was not in this match because Tatum was getting ready for later. But Spoiler. honestly, damn you. But Stephen Kirby just completely is like he didn't completely dominate the match, but he completely dominated the well, end of it. As we saw the video beforehand, Mr. Mayhem came back. Oh yeah. You see what happens when Mr. Mayhem comes back. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. It's dangerous. I mean yeah. Kirby Kirby alone is dangerous. Mr. Mayhem is a whole nother level. Oh yeah. It was just honestly it was Ian didn't make Go it Kirby. rain tonight. So Tatum Manning got his wish. He got to take on the MPX champion one-on-one. Yeah. But he forgot one little thing. This is Wesley's ways. It was Wesley's way. But again, again you know, Tatum being the great MPX addict, the greatest MPX addict champion. Uh, as we've learned, if you say it is true, um, that's what you said earlier. You said that on the show. If you say it is true. So therefore, Tatum is the greatest MPX addict. And Jamie, he's all yours. What? Greatest MPX Addicts champion? Of 2020, sir. Of 2020. Oh, uh, he's yeah. the only one. But either way, they, you know, one on one match. Uh, I just, honestly, Tatum tried, and I'll give him a lot of credit up, at least in, up until that, uh, that one really just questionable move. Are you talking about the very beautiful moving tribute to number 24, Kobe Bryant? Oh, Tatum showing out. Uh. Putting his heart on his sleeve, doing that beautiful tribute to Kobe. Oh, it was glorious. You know, and even did the, oh. Yeah, because he died without the uh, helicopter bit. But uh, we all knew it was Kobe. We all knew who he was talking about. It was yeah, a great, it was exactly. a beautiful tribute. Uh, either way, Wesley seemed to just like feed on the anger of the fans after that one. We're though, angry. Because, we uh, all love Kobe. Uh, yeah, we all love Kobe. And that's why we were all mad at Tatum. Because Wesley just basically, oh man, that hell stomp on the chairs. Well, he missed two of them. Uh, Notice he didn't yell hell stomp for the, the final time. Mm -hmm. He snuck up, you know. Let that be a lesson to wrestlers. Champion. Let the, let that be a lesson to wrestlers. If you yell the name of your move, you know it's more likely they're gonna like get out of it. I don't think that's true. I've seen people yell pile driver and actually hit it. True, but how many times have you also seen them, you know, duck out of it because they know it's coming? I mean, tomato, tomato. But still, it was you know one of those where yeah, we saw the hell stomp through the chairs and it was just poor. Poor, poor t that's a that's that's the money maker. You can't destroy the face. Oh come on, Tatum asked for this match. He was practically falling all over himself for it. No, what? No. Yeah, Tatum never. What? How? How, how was he falling over himself, sir? Are you going back to old Joe? Son of a. Thanks for watching MPX Addicts. That was MPX's Parabellum, and it was a. I Tatum show showed respect. respect to Kobe. You know, you should respect him. I showed him as much respect as he showed Kobe tonight. And honestly, it was a great show, except for, you know, a little hiccup there. But just honestly, we're coming up to the Texas Rumble. 30 men and women coming into this ring and just fighting to go on to destiny. The way you said it, it sounded like there's six people. It's 30 men or women. You said 30 men and women. It sounds like 60 people in the ring. No, no, that's, we're not at World War Three. So, no. No. Not, it's men or women. But it's going to be an amazing show. You make standing sure you room get your only. tickets now. Because, yeah, like he said, standing room only at this point. Living room sold out. Front room sold out. You can get second row, third row, general admission, standing. Mm -hmm. It's going to be there. And when you get season passes, which we highly advise all the time. Always. You can still get front row or living room season passes, but the Texas Rumble will be second row. Mm -hmm. And that's because you waited too long. You shouldn't wait too long. As soon as they yeah, announce, you go. It's, it's not hard. So seriously. Pull yeah. up your phone. Go to Facebook. Go to the events. Get tickets, not hard. It's and of course, pass. like I said, that all leads up to Destiny in March, which is going to be an incredible show. Who's going to be t the MPX champion at that point? Who's going to challenge the MPX champion at that point? I mean, we still haven't seen Michael Schaefer cash in the Prospect Championship yet. Who? Michael Schaefer? Kingsman? No, he quit Prospect again. Champion. You didn't hear about that? Yeah, he's no longer here. He quit. Michael, it's all yours. What? No. Have fun. Yeah, but either way, make sure you catch us here on YouTube and always on uh, MPX Radio every week. Because uh, you, you need know, more of me. Our, our last episode, we had Richard Hill on. That was great. It was a lot of fun. People don't know who that is. Well, they will after they listen to the show.
And we're going to have... I'm we fired. Have, <laughs> probably. <laughs> but we're going to have some incredible names on soon on MPX Radio. We're going to have Travis Trueborn, uh, lead official here at uh, MPX. We're going to have Cody, Cody Cox. Cox in which we're if going you to ever have, get back to him. Oh, I will. Oh, okay. Yeah. Tatum wants to be on our show. We need oh, him. Jeez, that's going to be you know. a whole lot of fun. Who knows? Maybe one day we'll even actually get Jamie Aller on the show, too. But either way, keep it kayfabe, wrestling fans. Who's your surprise entering the Rumble Thought? Do you want to suffer? <laughs> <laughs> <Berserker>. <laughs>